But I understand why people are turned off by religious practice. And part of that is, especially where I come from, from Dublin, although I'm up here a good many years now, people felt betrayed by the very institutions that they had given their love, their compassion, and their money to. And they felt betrayed in so many ways that such terrible things were done. And yet, when they came to have them exposed, the church closed ranks to protect each other. And it was really tragic at some time to talk to elderly people, like my, my own mother who died a number of years ago, who was a, a devout Catholic all her life. And how sad she was, how she had felt betrayed by something that she loved deeply, her church. She still retained her faith. And then in many ways, the churches set their, set their eyes and set everything about them as an obstacle to inclusive legislation, to make all those in our community feel at home. They became the gatekeepers of God. Only those we select would be allowed into the church. Here we welcome everybody in every sense. There's no small print. And even still we see the churches turn a deaf ear to all the women who wish to serve in ministry in many churches, but are still locked out. All those things made people reflect on what role does church play in my life? What do I need with religious practice? It was not longer compatible with the way I live my life. It's not just one issue maybe a lack of belief in what we understand as God and also the need to accept a specific religious creed. There was a time, you know, I don't remember, but it would appear there was a time when people went to church twice, three times on a Sunday, but mostly twice, morning service, and then the evening service. And you know, there is a direct link, I believe, between the fall with evening service and a TV program called Upstairs Downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. When Upstairs Downstairs became more popular, a little bit like an old fashioned downtown Abbey, a uh, downtown Abbey, people decided, I don't need to go to evening service anymore. I can stay home and be entertained. Indeed, television, more disposable income, and more possibilities <coughs> to be entertained contribute to fallen attendance. Now, I'm not for one moment comparing church going with entertainment. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> Better education made people feel capable of making their own mind up about moral judgment, what values they would live by. And that, to some extent, has contributed. Less reliance on the minister. Down south, you had to get the parish priest to sign everything for you. So you had to keep him with it. If you wanted a driving license, the parish priest signed it. If you wanted to get a job in the post office, the parish priest signed it. So it was well to keep living. And the best way to keep living was to let them see every Sunday at Mass. But that has changed. We now are capable of filling in our own forms, writing our own letters. And we now do it on technology, on our phones. But believe me, there's an interesting thing happening. Because religious practice 
is slowly on the increase. Now you wouldn't believe it to look around you or to go to many other churches, but it's actually on the increase. In France, in secular France, the most secular country in the world, where separation in church and state really matter, more young people now are presenting themselves for baptism. People who have no history of religion in their families are now turning to the church. In Finland, another incredibly secular country, where up to the least of most people would not only have described themselves as agnostic, but atheists, there are people returning to religious practices. The author of the book, Dominion, Tom Holland, he, one of the most noted agnostics in Britain, has now taken on religious practices. Now, in some cases in France and other countries, it is related in part to growing Islam and a fear, maybe not a genuine fear, but a fear in some people that Islam will now be the biggest faith in many countries that for, which were for centuries Christian. And that is a fear. It doesn't have to be a rational fear, but it can be a fear. But Tom Holland, while researching Dominion, he decided he would attend church services. His book, Dominion, is about the influence of Christianity over 2,000 years. Everything we do, our laws, our charities, but even common law in the United Kingdom, in principle, is based on the values enshrined in Christian belief. So he was looking at this in a sense towards human rights, equality, and freedom, all those things that are enshrined in citizenship in the UK essentially come from our Christian heritage. And this is what he discovered, that how dependent our state still is on interpreting our laws within a generic Christian concept. He began going to churches and eventually he returned to Christian faith, which really upset a lot of his prominent atheist friends. Richard Dawkins being one of them. Richard said, I don't mind you going and listening to the bells and the singing, but for God's sake, don't start believing in that nonsense. <laughs> and here today, we still have a family coming to have their child welcomed into a religious community. And why not? Because all of us in this world are always struggling to make sense of the meaning of life. And also a sense to put shape on what we believe in or to manifest it publicly and shape on the lives of our children. There is a conflict within us all between the view, is the story true? The Christian story we learn as children. Do we take the story literally? Is it true? Or is it a metaphor for how we should live our lives? That's up to each and every one of us to decide. And then there is the sense of wanting to belong to a church community where we practice ritual, where we mark the seasons, where our harvest service, our spring, our Easter service, and special services like Christmas, remembrance, and here in particular, our service every year, the pride service with the LGBT community which will take place on the 21st and Sunday at 3 o'clock, if you're interested. What would bring people back to religious practice? I honestly don't know. And does it matter? Does it really matter?
Because if, as Tom Holland said, our values are enshrined in our history, in our codes of ethics, in our common law, does it matter if people need to go to church and believe essentially in a prescribed faith? I suppose it does from certain points. Well, keeping people like me in business. But also understanding the values enshrined in our culture, the music, the manifestation of those values in ceremony, in the order that Trevor plays, the hymns he sing, manifest those values in public response and as a collective act. When we look outside into the secular world, we see, of course, the things that speak volumes about those values. The most beloved institution in all of the United Kingdom, the NHS, the National Health Service, somewhat in difficulty, but still yet treasured that even a Conservative Party is afraid to unpick it too much. The NHS, which was set up after the Second World War, when Britain was broke, really broke, and yet took time to set up uniquely a universal health service that was open to everybody. And this was the inspiration of Nye Bevan, who was a member of the Methodist Church. So he was more motivated by Methodism than Marxism. And that the NHS is a clear response of those values enshrined in our Christian belief. Love your neighbour as yourself. What a great way of showing love for your neighbour, but through the NHS. The impact of Christianity on Western society is intrinsically linked to the living faith of those and established its institutions and values. It's often forgotten that in 1831, at the behest of Wilberforce, Britain outlawed slavery, a Christian gentleman. But not only outlawed it, but the British government at the time built hundreds of new Royal Naval vessels and took to the seas, not only to make sure that Britain didn't deal in slavery, but that the rest of the world didn't deal in slavery. And over 1,500 Royal Navy personnel lost their lives for abolishing slavery throughout the world. That was a Christian response. That's the values I'm talking about. And today we take part in one of those rituals, which is important, extremely important to our church, baptism. Baptism, an outwardly sign that there is care and love and family in community. And we here in All Souls are blessed that you've come here today to have your baby baptized there. We are blessed that you have chosen us. We are blessed to see your family, all your friends, all your colleagues join you here for this significant moment. A moment of sacred expression, expression of faith, and yet still a connection with the past. Something new, yet retained in something old. Marrying the new with the old. What we should always do. But most importantly, above all other, it is a clear sign of family, faith and community are central to us all. Amen.